this episode. Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to Freshly Grounded, episode 199. We're one episode away from uh, the big 200. And uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy the 200th, the 200th episode, inshallah. Uh, but this episode is um, just as amazing. Inshallah, we haven't shot it yet. We're going to be, normally we do the intro, as you guys know, uh, or we try to do the intro kind of after the, the episode so we can give you guys a lowdown of uh, what we spoke about. But every now and again, like today, when we shoot the episode a bit late, uh, and we don't have a lot of time to get it out, we will shoot the intro in advance like we're doing now. But we have also had Abdul Ahad on, um, inshallah, today. and But we also have... A special guest host. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Suleiman, thank you so much. I've been trying to convince you to host an episode of Fresh Ground with me for the longest time. So jazakallah khair for joining me. No, I'm I'm so I'm so like privileged to be here. And alhamdulillah, you know, I had to kind of give in to the hosting thing. And inshallah, one day I could be as amazing as Faisal Chabu. Bro, inshallah, bro, inshallah, one day you're gonna you can we can we can convince you to be here as a permanent. Uh, a, a, a soldier of of the freshly guided hosting team. You know what? Yeah, if the if they want me on there permanently, they got five hundred likes. <laughs> five hundred <laughs> likes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get the 500 likes. Uh, guys, comment if you want to um, see more of Suleiman hosting uh, on this episode. How Are you excited for the episode to be hosting? Oh, well, I, to be honest, I'm very, very excited, especially I'm going to be um, hosting uh, our stud, you yeah. know, Abdul Ahad, you know, so it's, it's, it's one of our, it's one of our, a nerve wracking one <laughs> because he's like, you know, he's, he's my teacher, so. Inshallah. C- can I just also say that that Shemag looks amazing when you're in Oh, uh, yeah, one of my friends put it on. So really? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. He's, um, <laughs> he must be very talented. Um, <laughs> no, he actually put that on. Yeah. <laughs> he actually put that on. So. Um, what do you guys think of this? Let me know what you guys oh, think of this. This might be the new look from that, you know. I might, I might good. start going with this one. I, I, do you know what? I should as well because I've got a few of them. Yeah. And I don't know why I don't. I, I, I just, mine just comes out of the drawing in Ramadan times for some reason. Yeah, I'm, I think I've seen you. Were, yeah, you were yeah. in Koba. You know, Ramadan, the Ramadan times you feel a bit more like... I'm going to wear the Shema. It's a you know, special. I don't know why, but when I wear this, I just feel like a Bedouin. Nah. I feel like a proper Bedouin. I feel nah, like, like good a Jazakallah One of my friends, his name is Yonis Tawil. He, okay. he actually sells these, so I want to shout out Yonis as well. Uh, he that. actually he uh, started this. It's a closing, so it's nice. It's nice. It's very nice. And uh, I just, it's like that whole Bedouin feeling, so it just makes me feel a little bit more grounded. grounded. Yeah, 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 I like that. I like that. <laughs> freshly, freshly. All right. Um, with that being said, also, um, guys, before we get into the before we get into the episode, uh, please do bear in mind that there's links in our description for all of the charities and charitable causes that we're supporting, uh, including um, uh, probably one that's close to everybody on this podcast, um, uh, close to everybody's heart on this podcast, which is uh, the Masjid in Kilburn, uh, which one of our teachers is um, also a, a big part of, and uh, we're trying to we're still we've still got the donation link up on our page. Um, and the masjid, what happened is during COVID, the masjid had shut down, like all of the other masjid, right at the beginning. But then um, getting it back open was a real struggle because they needed complete renovation. Um, the Quran classes in there stopped, and uh, they want to basically make more space for more Quran classes. Uh, they want to make more space for more students and more space for more people to pray in a jamaat. So please, please do go and check out that link in the description as well as the other links. And without any further ado, finally get into the episode inshallah so here is episode 199 of freshly grounded and welcome to freshly grounded the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and sam huh i welcome i said welcome to freshly grounded after that bit the brand new podcast and after that bit by best friends Faisal and sam really Alhamdulillah. Well, in that, with that being said, let's uh, bring on Ustad Abdul Ahad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ustad. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are we doing? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Not too bad. It's a pleasure. Jazakumullah khairan. It's a pleasure having you on. Jazakumullah khair for joining us and thank you for bringing along uh, the gift that is Suleiman as well. Uh, <laughs> you're both the gift. 
سبحان الله الحمد لله uh, Usad Hastings how are you doing الحمد لله not too bad not too bad yourself yeah الحمد لله I'm very good I'm actually I'm trying to get used to like which buttons are for who <laughs> because like I'm, I'm like switching between all three people ah, so I'm so trying to so the mid- switching now huh? yeah we're doing live switching inshallah to make things easier so uh, I've got to remember who's who I think so Suleiman is one Usad is number two and I'm number three yeah yeah there we are So we should be a good inshallah. Okay, now in order to get started, I thought what would be a good start considering we haven't really met in person properly or have we met in person? I think perhaps we may have met across paths, but we yeah, haven't like indirectly. Why right, we haven't been like formally yeah. introduced, right? So I thought like a, a great way to uh, for us to 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 have our first conversation would be for me to ask you a completely random question from our freshly guy in the card game. Brilliant. This could literally be anything, and what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to completely make sure that. Whatever question I get is the question that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask for. That's me. Number three okay. is me. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna choose a random card. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna actually ask you three, so we can try and get variety. Is that okay with you? Bismillah. No problem. Okay. Uh, first question: How can you improve your relationship with your parents? Tough one, man. How can I improve my relationship with my parents? Um, I mean, the usual answer would be speak to them more. But I think the best way I think is just to be around more, man. Especially with especially like stuff I do personally. My timetable is really busy, so I would be teaching if it means teaching, studying if it means studying, dealing with community work and just general stuff like that. So. Just seeing them more, man. Speaking to them more, sitting down with them more. Even if it's not speaking, just be in their presence. Uh, I think that's the one I have the most difficulty with personally myself. Fine. Okay, that's a good response. And we'll comment. We'll comment on them after as well. Next one says, "What's stopping you from taking that big step in life?" Fear of not knowing the outcome. That's a very good answer. Fear of not knowing the outcome. Um, there's a lot of things to be honest that you might come across be like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, and that one little movement might be the thing that actually you know improves your life, both dunya and deen wise as well. To be honest, but sometimes you just think to yourself, imagine if it goes this way, imagine if it's not going to come out the way it is, etc. So I think it's fear of not knowing the outcome to me, it's fear of the future, which to be honest isn't a good trait, <laughs> even though I think it's natural, isn't it? Yeah, very it's natural. natural, but it's not good. <laughs> So it's I, know, I think that it, it shows maturity, doesn't it? Because I think you, in youth, you see a lot of people who take too big risks uh, because they don't consider the outcome. So I, I would say that it's actually quite a positive trait, um, especially with someone like yourself who's a very balanced person. You come across like a very balanced person. So if, you're, if you've got a fear of the future, I think that it, I imagine that it would be quite a, quite a kind of a balanced fear. Let's uh, hope so, inshallah. Let's go with the last one. I this think question. I should ask him the last one. Let me go. I want to do it. I want to yeah, go yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have one for you as well, Suleiman, after, yeah? Okay, let me ask that start one there, yeah? Do you know, are you, are you, do you know which one you're going to go for? Or you're just going to go random? I don't get put on the spot, random. man. Wow. It's a big one. When I think of meeting Allah, I feel blank. When I think of meeting Allah, what comes to mind is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he mentioned to us that there's going to be on the day of judgment when the people of Jannah are put into Jannah, people of Paradise, they enter Paradise. The Prophet sallallahu told us there's for you nadi munadin. There's going to be a caller that calls out, and that caller that calls out. He's going to say to them, O oh, people of Jannah, Inna lakum mawidan inda rabbikum. You have an appointment with your Lord. Your Lord is calling you. And imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Call my servants and tell them, I am calling you. Wow. Could you ever imagine right now, I don't know, a prime minister or even someone famous or anything like that said, Call Suleiman, tell him so and so wants him. Or even Faizu, call him, tell him I want him. You know, the adrenaline rush and the feeling you get, etc. Mm-hmm. Then the hadith continues and says, they're going to reply and say, but what is he calling us for? Mm-hmm. And then this caller is going to say, he has something for you, so come. He has something to give you. Where are these people in right now? 
Jannah. Jannah. The account is done. I mean, there's no more account. There's no more hisab. There's no more asking. No, 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 no. People are in hellfire. People are in Jannah. Mm. So they ask and say, we are already in Jannah. I mean, we've been given everything. What else is there? What's yeah. there that's remaining? They, they, they would be confused. Then this caller comes out and says, I mean, just come. Power phrasing. And then they come. They stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he uplifts his veil. And this is the tafsir of Qawl Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah where he said, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادًا For those that do good, they're going to be given al-husna. They're going to be given good. Yeah. This good is jannah. وزيادة, they're going to be given an increase. They're going to be given even more than that. Oh, so the ziyada is another ila wajhillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them. Amen. So Amen. when you Amen. say what is the thing you think about when you meet Allah, my answer to that is, first of all, if I am going to be from those people that are called out of Jannah to say, come, you've got one last gift basically. Mm. And secondly, what do I think about is that moment Allah, he lifts up his veil because mm. We don't know what Allah looks like exactly. We can't even think of what He looks like mm. So just to actually initially look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And you just melt out of uh, humility And also honour because it is an honour So it's that initial look I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those That are given the ability Faces on the day will be radiant mm. And they will be looking at their Lord so that's the, that's, that's the one person. Um, and of course, fear of sins that you've been doing behind closed doors. Yeah. Fear of Allah asking you, why did you do this? And yeah. that stuff. It's the trembling feeling. Generally, there's a lot of things, Wallah. We could speak for hours. <laughs> like initially, it's that, it's that initial look at Allah. I say, wow, this is, this, is, this is my Lord. This is the one that yeah. you know, describes himself. Yeah. This is him. You know? uh, oh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tawfiq and that I ability mean, to Allah do that. That was beautiful. That was you, you know one thing that I um, was recently I was recently watching a lecture that was explaining some of the stuff um, that will take place uh, on Yom Qiyamah and one of the things that really stood out to me was this idea that the hellfire will be if I'm not mistaken or said like almost like trying to look at people who they who it has rights over and the people will be trying to look away right and the reason it scared me so much is because when you start hearing the ways that like the hellfire is like being characterized, oh, yeah. you start to realize that it exists, right? Mm. Because sometimes you can you can easily like ignore something like the hellfire because you can't see it right yeah. now. Yeah. And you can't really characterize it. Yeah. And so it's easy to kind of like ignore. And then when you start hearing about some of its traits, um, the description of it, it starts like just becoming real to you and yeah. then and then you start picture, putting yourself there you start i started literally thinking it, i started imagining myself like trying to like Look keep away, my yeah. eye contact away wow. from the hellfire i don't know if, if for some reason like thinking about the hellfire has a massive impact on me always um whereas i know and i mentioned it before as i know for for others like a lot of my friends as well they like to reflect a lot more on jannah mm. um but for some reason just Reflecting on Jahannam really, it's like I need that fear, yeah. you know. And it's and it's what really keeps you away from doing sins. Right. It really so so subhanallah. I can relate with that a lot as well. Mm. I like to actually know more about Same. the punishment and the the adab and you know everything. I like to really more like hundred percent to know more about that. No, definitely. So of course, us as Muslims, we are instructed to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala based upon fear and hope. So of course, firstly, there needs to be that balance. You can't be someone who's 24-7 locking himself up at home. Oh, I'm going to go into the hellfire. And all you ever think about is the hellfire and pessimism and negativity. And are you serious? If we look back at our pious predecessors, mm -hmm. when it came to this hellfire, they were a people, forget the hellfire, in fact. When it came to the day of judgment, like you're talking about the hellfire, before the hellfire even comes, our pious predecessors, they used to really ponder upon this. Is narrated that uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha was from the, uh, one of our pious predecessors. He was lying down on the lap of his wife. So he was lying down and he just started crying. Crying his eyes out. 
And then of course, just like a wife would do, we're hoping, inshallah, <laughs> she started to cry as well. So imagine you're just lying down on the lap of your wife, just resting, long day at work, etc. And then you just start crying your eyes out. And then she starts crying as well. And then he asked her, why are you crying for? And he's like, what is it that's making you cry? And then she says, I saw you crying, so I just started to cry. We hope our sisters are like that as well, inshallah ta'ala. But she, she started to cry as well because she sees her husband and she loves him crying. So then she asked and said, okay, I of course saw you crying. That's why I cried. What was making you cry? Like, Why did you randomly cry? And then he said, Allah Ta'ala, I remembered the speech of Allah, wa im minkum illa wariduha. Every single one of you is gonna go past it. And either bridge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions every single one of you. There's nobody that's not gonna go past this bridge. What's at the end of the bridge? Jannah. What's right below it? The hellfire. So he says, We've been told that we are gonna pass a bridge. And we don't even know if we're going to be saved from it. And if this is a bridge, it's not the hellfire. So the person, he should be thinking about what's coming in the hellfire. Allah mentions that the hellfire, Allah is going to speak to it. He's going to say, Halim talati. Allah is going to ask and say, are you full up? Do you need more? Uh, Do you need more people? The fuel for the fires, the people. Do you need more people to enter inside you? And then she's going to say, I say she of course, because in the Quran, the nar is also feminine in Arabic. And then the hellfire is going to reply and say, Hal min mazid, is there more? And I'm not full up. And there's a hadith of Prophet Sallam where he وسلم, said, Yurwa min shafati jahannam hajar. There was, a, there was a rock that got thrown from the hellfire. And it didn't reach the pit, i.e. the bottom, for 70,000 years. Seventy thousand years. Oh, come on, call the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Seventy thousand years. Comprehend that. So, ala kulli hal, shahid min al-kalam. The point is that we should be people that ponder upon it. We should be people that think about the hellfire, the characteristics, but also have some balance and think about jannah and what Allah subhanahu wa taala has prepared for those who stay away from that which they've been prohibited from, etc. You know. I think nowadays, um, especially with uh, social media and stuff, and I was actually having this topic with my, one of my friends is um, a lot of the youth nowadays, they see a lot of reminders on social media. Mm. So sometimes they see the most like touching reminders where it touches them so much. And then they see, straight after that, they see, um, you know, they might see one of their friends and he's playing music and he's listening to, you know, he, you know, their friends like, like so it's kind of a, a mix of balance of emotion whilst, whilst they're on social media. So like you said, some people, you know, it should be, it, it, you know, we should have the fear of balance and we should have the fear. Uh, we should sorry. We should we should have the balance of having fear, and also we should have the hope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, what what advice would you give, like basically for the youth that are constantly just on the mobiles, and then you know they just like they anything that you see? Because nowadays, you know, back in the day, if somebody actually gave me a reminder before I was like before we had iPhones and all these technologies. If someone gave me a reminder and said like you know, Akhi, like you know, fear Allah, stop that would, it would touch me. Because of the fact, like, you don't really see that too much. But now, I feel like on your mobile, you one minute you're watching a reminder, next minute you're watching, you know, some funny meme where there's music in the background, mm. people dancing. Mm. So it's just this whole mix of emotion thing where now when you speak to the youth, if you actually give them a reminder, they just think of it as like a clip that they just literally just been watching mm. on their phone. So they just look at you and be like, subhanAllah, that's so touching. Next minute, you know, they just bust a joke of you. Yeah. <laughs> you hear what happened down there? And you think, wow, didn't this touch you? If this was me back in the day with, with, without me having my iPhone, this reminder that you would have gave me now, I would have went home, I would have been thinking about it. While my parents just talking, I would have been thinking about it on my bed, I would have been thinking about it. But now, it feels like everything is just contactless. You get everything's just so fast. You speak to someone, like, every, like that's just w with the youth. So I try to kind of give them this reminder of clean your social media first. But they have this hard thing of like, I don't want to, uh, like with my friends basically if I unfollow them they might think I'm better than them mm. they might look at me in some type of way and etc so I don't know what kind of advice would you give to someone because you know we, we know the hadith al -mar ala deen khalili. you know the per a, a person is on the religion of his companion but at the same time I think social media that person is still connected to you even if you try to get rid of them physically 
You know, if you physically just stay away from them, they know that you're going to watch my story. I know right now you're going to watch my story. So I've still got influence on you. So like, what kind of advice, if that makes sense, would you give? Yeah, no, I, I kind of have a follow-up question to that, actually, that probably makes sense for, for you to answer at the same time. And that's that, um, you know, oh, often <coughs> teachers te um, talk about the youth, right? And um, I think that there's also like there's a huge benefit that can be done for, for, for other audiences in, on this same topic of balance. Mm. Um, we find that in Freshly Grounded, our audience, for the majority of them, are like aged between 25 and 34. And so our audience is not as young as like perhaps if they're in university, they're just leaving university. Mm. Um, but most of them are in, uh, you know, they're in jobs and they're jobs that they've been in for a few years. And so they built up their status in that job. So um uh, and they start in family, so a lot of our audience, just like us, they they start in a new Muslim family for the first time. Yeah. They're having their first child. They're having a, they they having a, they they get married for the first time. Um, uh, they're getting married to their first wife. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay like but that. Stay like that, people. They're but getting married to a wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but no, but, 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 but in general, we, the, we our audience is very much so young adults who are now starting to establish themselves in life, rather yeah. than a few years ago, yeah. it was people who were in mid mid university and stuff like that. And so I think that the, this this discussion of balance. There's, a, there's another topic here that I don't often see spoken about. And I think it's very relevant for our audience and for, for, for us as well. And uh, uh, Suleiman and myself have recently both have had children. Are you, is it public knowledge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's all right. I'm a father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Suleiman, the father, father. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, God bless both of your kids. Allahumma ameen. So the question I have with, with regards to balance for our audience is <clears throat> we don't often hear people speak about balancing your love right so like even your children and your wife or your children and your husband for the sisters there's there's even then there's a there's a limit right of how much love before it gets like dangerous love and we don't ever really speak about that and i want to know more about that like how far because i for me myself i can't even imagine limiting the love that i have for my son i can't imagine it what is dangerous love, Faisal? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. But, uh, but <laughs> that's I, what that's I, what I, I, yeah, I exactly. want to know. Yeah, what's dangerous <laughs> love instead? <laughs> yeah, no. no, Jamil, that's, 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 that's really good. So first of all, to have natural inclinations to certain human beings is something which is innate. It's something which is innate, something which is in every person. They're born with it. And it isn't a negative trait until it passes a certain thing. So the... If you want to say the limits to it, are as follows. But if we look at example first, Yaqub alayhi salam, mm -hmm. he had, who was of course the father of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yaqub alayhi salam had two wives. He had ten kids with one, and the other one he had two kids, Yusuf and Binyamin. We all know the story of Yusuf alayhi salam where they say, uh, uh, our father loves Yusuf more. So the ten that were from the other wife, they were complaining and saying, this Yusuf guy, of course when I say Yusuf guy, I mean the prophet, yeah. <laughs> respectfully. Yeah, this Yusuf guy, our father, he loves Yusuf more than us. Mm -hmm. And we are usbatun. We are firstly older than him in age. Secondly, we are the ones that look after the, you know, the, 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 the house. We're the ones that look after our income and all that other stuff. He doesn't even do anything. And he loves this guy more. So this is a prophet. This is a prophet who loved one of his sons out of the others. So first of all, that's an evidence to show us that it's something which is normal. It's innate. The Prophet Sallallahu himself, he mentions clearly and says, I love out of his wives. And he was more inclined and loved. Aisha radiallahu anha. He didn't, he didn't stay away from that. He didn't hide that either. But there is a problem when responsibilities, rights, are, if you want to say, destroyed, dismantled, or affected. That's when the problem comes. What do I mean by that? Responsibilities or rights are divided into three. Number one, rights and responsibilities of Allah. Mm. Number two, rights and responsibilities of the general mass. This is Muslims and non-Muslims. The Muslims have a right over, over you. 
Like the, and also the non-Muslims have a right of view A lot of people might say Oh but they're disbelievers and X, Y, Z No, no, no akhi. They have human rights over you Okay Third one is rights that you yourself have over yourself mm-hmm. So the problem comes When this natural love that you might have for someone Interrupts in these three rights and responsibilities That Allah put upon you Let's look at some examples You love your wife and I hope you both love your wives, inshallah. You both love your life, a love that the Arabs, they called ishq. So we have hub, and then we have ishq. Hub is just love. And then ishq is deep, intimate love that the person is kind of crazy about them, okay? Um, okay, because you love her so much, you, for example, don't want to sleep in the night. You just want to stay awake and watch movies. And then what happens? You cannot get a rest. But you've just dismantled a right that your body has over you, which is to give it rest. The Prophet said. Another example, you, for example, might love your job so much, like you're crazy, for example, about freshly grounded. Okay? That love you have for flesh freshly grounded becomes a problem the moment one of these three rights are put down the drain. Wow. Or even affected. Wow. So you might say to yourself, okay, fine. You have the kid. You have a kid, of course. May Allah bless him Ameen. or her. Allahumma so, Ameen. you have a responsibility. For example, I don't know. Let's say you you have to get milk or just something like that mm. for the kid. You have some editing to do, and this recording, of course, needs to go up very soon, right? Yeah. So you'd be like, no, I need to do this. Yeah. But the love you have for freshly grounded, because it's reached such a level that you put that in front of one of the three responsibilities and rights, which is, of course. The human right that your child has So anyway In a nutshell You can of course Look at many examples And if we look at a Right of Allah Because that's so far Right of a Muslim right mm. And a, uh, just general human beings Rights of Allah Praying salah for example mm. Even sadaqah A right of Allah And the humans actually Sadaqah Zakah is a right of The poor people mm. And it's a right of Allah right mm. You have money And this money Allah described And he said وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمًّا you love this money, a great love. Mm. This money you love so much, if it goes in the way of you giving sadaqah, it becomes a problem, man. Mm. It becomes a problem. You can't let that slip. So anyway, in a nutshell, we could use many examples. But love, first of all, I'll just conclude by saying, we have the natural innate love that is normal. It's mamduh, it's praiseworthy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not negative either. But... The moment that that love you have for that thing goes against any of these three rights, these three responsibilities, yeah. these three hukuk that these three groups of people have upon you, Allah, yourself, and also uh, the Muslims, then you're in danger, man. It's a problem. It's a major problem. Subhanallah. Um, and everyone has that. Everyone has certain things they love that they can't really leave off. And it's a natural thing. I mentioned Yaqub loved his son Yusuf more than the others. But... It shouldn't let you go in front of Or it shouldn't let you affect the rights of these people Just balance it all out Balance it all out It's hard as well But this is why we're here We're here to be tested We are even tested in love 100% Why are we tested in love? Allah mentioned in the Quran وَنَبَلُوكُمْ بِالْشَرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna. Many people think to themselves That tests in life are just Negative things mm. Evil that occurs to us mm. Someone's got cancer Someone's got You know A financial problem Have we ever thought That good things Are also A test So the love you have For this Allah is testing you With it It's a test from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Because that's what We're here from That end anyway So when we look at On, in, on that parallel As well Where Even this love's a test man Every Let's ponder upon this Okay And this is going to be More interactive I'm going to ask you guys Inshallah we are here, everything we're here for is just to be tested. Me coming here today is a test. How is it a test? I made an appointment with you, am I going to stick to it? Am I going to come with the etiquettes that I was you know, told to come with in terms of when you're meeting someone, for example? And it, this is a test. I think, now you, look might, at I this. think you may pass that one in charge. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. So look, 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 look though. When we ponder upon the how this life is... And by the way, if you don't take anything from this podcast, well, I just take this. Because it summarizes life. It summarizes why we are here and everything. And nobody's ever mentioned this before. Let's look at the five pillars of Islam. Take out Shahada la ilaha illallah. 
In fact, we can include it, to be honest. We are going to analyze them from two aspects. We're going to analyze them. Are they ibadah maliyah or ibadah badaniyah? What does that mean? Is it a worship pertaining to wealth or is it a worship pertaining to your body, physical actions? Are you ready, Faisal? I'm ready. I'm you ready. should know these already. But they're simple anyway. So, Shahadati Allah ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Let's put that to a side. The next one was to establish prayer. Wa mm. Is it a body type worship or is it a worship pertaining to wealth? Establishing prayer. Both. You know, is it both? Why would someone need money to pray? Oh, no, sorry. I thought it, in the sense that. Um, so are they connected I to mere fine, physical fine, actions fine, fine. or is it connected like, to wealth and money? I, I thought it was more like that it would benefit you in wealth. Yeah. Oh, no, no, right? no, no, no. But um, okay. for you to body. do them, do you just need your body? Is it a physical action you need right. to do or you also need wealth? Body, body. Body, good. Yeah. That's correct. To give the zakah, give charity. Is that. it physical actions or is it more specific to your wealth? Maliya. Maliya, good. It's wealth. Yeah. So the first one, establishing prayer, it's your body. Second one, giving charity wealth. to wealth. Next one, Saum Ramadan, fasting the month of Ramadan. Faisal. Faisal. That one. Is it your body or do you need mm, money I'm for that? I'm going to go with body with that one. <laughs> yeah. It's body as well. Nah. <laughs> but this is interesting though. Which other one was body? Salah. Salah, right? Salah. Salah was a physical act you need to do. Yeah. Fasting is an act you need to do, but it's kaf, it's abstaining. Uh. So it's still your body. But it's not a physical act, mm. it's abstaining. And what we abstain them from? Food, right? And desires. Desires. Intimacy. These are the two things the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whomsoever protects his stomach and his private part, he's succeeded. So it's the most hardest things to deal with. Okay? Yeah. What's the next one? Hajjul Bayt. Hajjul Bayt. Minister Ta'ala said, going and performing Hajj. Both. Quick. Both. Good. This one you need wealth and you physically need to oh, go and course, do it. Of course, of course. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you need to pay the money. Good. I was just thinking body there, but yeah. Now yeah. let's ponder upon this. The thing that Allah said to Hibbun al Mala Hubban Jamma, you love this wealth so much. And the desires of your private parts and your stomach. You've been told to abstain from it. And you've also been told to physically do an action. So abstaining, doing the two things you love the most. Wow. All of these things in the five pillars of Islam. Have we not pondered how the variation of the test, or should I say, the test has been varied so much mm. just to make the test even harder? Wow. Your wealth, physical actions, abstaining. Because it could have all just been, look, let's just deal with the wealth. Let's just, the ulama, they mentioned that our five pillars in and within itself has been verified, uh, sorry, has been varied, has been given variation and not exclusified to one thing. Just so that you be made tested, so that you may be tested even harder. Wow. What did Allah wow. say? Alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the seven heavens and earth, liyabaluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Only you may be tested. That's it. So my point is, I believe love is a test in and within itself. Mm. Mm. You know what? Uh, something I found so powerful in that is that you ne I I've never really considered this idea of it getting dangerous when you're when it's affecting the rights of the other things that should have rights over you the other things or the other people uh, or Allah um, and it makes so much sense when you put it into context because you do sometimes go oh you know what this is going to be a, a tough week at work I'm, I'm predicting it's going to be a tough week so yeah. I'm going to have to put this this and this to the side this week just because it's going to be one of those weeks but really truly that should be a red, flat red flag and saying well why is it that I'm having to give up other rights that uh, my body or people have over me um, just for like this one thing, which is work. So, and I've, I've definitely find myself falling into that. Do you? Mm. No, 100%, 100%. Um, well, like, to be honest, um, you know, there's one question that I actually wanted to ask in, 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 the, in the middle of that. Um, you know, when you, you know too much love. So right now having too much love right now, and it's like, um, like for instance, I used to look at it as it might be too, uh, some people might take it for granted, so I used to think sometimes if I'm if I'm too nice to someone, because you've seen it sometimes, like sometimes if you're too nice to somebody, they might take it for granted. So mm. 
is that me being defensive or would you say no no i think that's i think that's you being smart i think that's you being smart no but i'm saying also with like family and stuff that's what, what do you mean i don't I, I don't get it i mean you say if you're too nice to someone they might take it for granted like for you instance, shouldn't have that negative assumption though no i mean as in like sometimes you know for instance if somebody knows that you're you're the type of person if i ask you for something i know you'll give it to me mm -hmm. If you're the, you're the type of person who like, you know, and it's, sometimes some people just take that for granted. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So even sometimes with family and stuff, do you think sometimes um, being too nice, like like actually being too nice and showing too much love is is, 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 is a dangerous thing? Like, what do, what do you think about that? I don't think it's dangerous. As long as, so everything's upon intention, right? So if you have come with the intention, like however they deal with it, they will deal with it. However they deal with it, yeah. they might be like, "Ah, oh, this guy's too nice, man. Let me make the most of him, etc." Ma alayka illa al Upon you is nothing but just to do whatever is good, khalas. You know. So I think it comes back to what are you getting out of it at the end of the day. If you think to yourself, "Look, I'm going to be nice to them so that I can get this," mm. that's one thing. Then you might have you know be a bit skeptical. Shall I be nice, etc.? But if your point is just, "I want the pleasure of Allah," that's it. Yeah. Then for you it doesn't matter Even if they start taking for granted Why I hope it doesn't now, really Sometimes I have that problem man I have that problem Sometimes I think to myself Like You know everyone gets Them little thoughts in your head Sometimes you think to yourself Maybe it's because I was just so kind to this person Like Do you know what I mean though so I don't know what it is Sometimes you think to yourself It's a possibility, it's a possibility. Could, you, what, could, what, could we reference the um, The fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Left His houses Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When his wives Um were like trying to request more from him as a as, as as something that could relate to this idea of like almost being the type of person that could be nice and then yeah like what sort of am i talking about could we or is that a bit mm, of a stretch yes or is that a completely no. different kind of scenario no i think i think there's 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 definitely links um but I don't know. I just see it personally. I see it as, and even if you look at the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he never done something expecting something in return, or he never done something caring about how the person thinks. There's there's never been an instance where he specifically said, you know what, he thought to do something, and he thought to himself, I wonder how he would take etc. The only time he would is when he was considering. The other person and not himself. Mm. Like he would, for example, be like, "Ah, oh, imagine if I'm too nice to that person, they might, for example, take it in a bad way." So he's thinking about the other person, not himself. Yeah. So that's praiseworthy. That yeah. that's that's fine. Like you might think, "Ah, oh, if I'm too nice, okay." So is taking gifts to someone uh, at one a.m. in the night something good? Is no, sorry, no, rewind. Is it is it something good to give a gift to someone generally? It's yes. something amazing. It's something amazing. Yeah, Very yeah, good. I agree with that. Is it, however, or what negatives could come from giving someone a gift at 1 a.m. in the night when they're sleeping? You, yeah, you're disturbing them in their sleep. It's not but the right time. There you yeah. go. But you've considered that because you're considering his, his side of things. That's good. But don't be thinking about your side of things when you're giving. Mm. I don't know if that made sense. I think the expression was a bit, a bit, a bit hard. No, but generally, if you're thinking about the person's if it means well-being, the person's general, you know, good thoughts of him, himself, and how he's going to take it, etc. That's good. But if you're going to think about negative things that might come across it, or that might be a benefit to you, I think that kind of becomes a problem after. Allah it's a really good mm. question. So I just really want to ask that. What do you guys think though? What, do, do, you guys, do you guys fall into that quite often? Do you, do you think you're too nice a bit sometimes? Or, Perhaps, or do you, you consider how someone might take something? Faisal, do even you ever, if it's do you good, ever, okay. even do you if it's ever good. Ever experienced that where you think to yourself, um, you know, if I be over, like, because you, you, just generally, just if sometimes if you just be you being yourself, as in yeah. just a nice person, just the way you are. But there's some people afterwards, you know, do you ever feel like let me not be too nice because <laughs> it might kind of like you know what I mean though it might kind of because some people actually do take kindness for weakness and yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, be honest yeah, with you, yeah, it yeah. does happen, and it's not something that I always think about as in like. Yeah, but if they take it as a weakness, why do you care? Good point. Are they gonna come and boot your house down? No, is there any no, no. danger think, to your yeah, life? That's what I'm saying. I think there's Why something wrong with me. Care? <laughs> I think there's something wrong with me sometimes. I think, but I don't really think like that too much no, now. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But before, I mean, like even like you know when I You're when I started practicing, you're about being too sort of yeah. open, open, nice. I get what you mean. Because before practicing, you kind of have that kind of vibe, as in like don't be too like just be a bit 
you know, minimum mm -hmm. in terms of your speech and stuff like that. But Alhamdulillah, I think I feel like a lot of people go through it, a lot of youth as well, especially the young ones. Have you seen when you're speaking to like 18, 19 year olds, even yeah, like, like you said, it's like more for them, you're right. A lot of people like our age, we're all in the same kind of bracket and the people are listening right now, like the fresh Uganda people, they're, they're like all up in our ages. But you know, the 18 year olds and the 17 year olds, when you speak to them, it's like they're just very min. Yeah, I'm alright. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what? they feel that like they don't want to because they know because they know why. It's like right now, Faisal. If you get an 18 year old and you sit them down opposite us right now yeah, and you interview like, yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be one of the worst fresh. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you know what I mean? Because they'll be like, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah I'm alright. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, I think. Yeah. I think they're just that like very socially awkward, but I think it's the fact of going back to social media as well. No, no, no. I think maybe I'm wrong. It's just my opinion. I think that is down to previous experiences. You know, you know what I said. I think right. So I, I think there's like two different things we're talking about here. But this, I, I was one thing I was reflecting on today was this thing that you're talking about, about young people, and uh, okay. So there were two separate things we were talking about. First thing was this idea of like. Um, feeling like you're being too nice and perhaps you'll take people for granted. I'm not trying to sound like fakely humble here, but I never I never get that for I've never had that. The reason is because whenever whenever I have interaction with people, I actually seem to always feel like I'm I've been really rude. That I always think I'm rude. And that's, that's probably because wow. like fe genuinely most of the time I am. And I was actually well, I'm no, you're no, no, probably no. one of the nicest guys. No, that's not true. It's because you've <laughs> seen me in like bits, right? And um, I was no, speaking to I've Sam about this you. today. I uh, know, no, I was speaking to Sam about this today, right? And uh, but there's been times where I've probably been rude to you, bro. Even no, yeah. I mean, like we stayed together remember in brother. Remember when we stayed there know, over the I retreat? Remember. Right. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We did, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but bro, like even like, like for example, um, I was speaking to Sam today, and I said that one of the questions on these cards actually, he asked me one of the questions on the card, and uh, one of the questions on the card was, "What do you? F what about? What about keeping in touch with people? Do you find difficult?" And I said, if you want me to answer that, you know, re like really honestly, the thing that I find really difficult sometimes about keeping in touch with people is that I feel like, and this is really bad of me, I sometimes feel like that it will, um, it will hinder my progress or my productivity, and therefore, like, I almost mm. avoid it because I'm like, if I'm spending all my time. Um, catching up with people oh, I'm never gonna do X, Y, Z and I feel like the times that any any good that has come after Allah I feel like it's because I've been able to put that relationships to the side and just be tunnel visioned and like my fear of interacting with people too much is that right and so um, the reason this comes full circle is because that's part of the reason why I feel like I'm constantly rude to people yeah. and so whenever I interact with people I genuinely walk away majority of the time going I'm such a, I have such a bad character. <laughs> no, I, you're embracing your, you're embracing your responsibilities. I think I go a bit overboard sometimes. No, it's me. actually you embracing it and people can, I, you know what it is, where you're actually, you know, a lot of people see what you're doing in terms of, um, you know, just as a person, as an individual, people can read what type of person you are. So, you know, if you're out here embracing your responsibilities and you're working hard, I think people get it. But if you're just a person who's literally not being rude for anybody else, but not really got a lot of stuff going on for themselves. And you're doing that in terms of you just not contacting no one, stuff like that. Then it's like you looked at as somebody who's quite rude. But if you've got a busy schedule and you're very busy and you're still making that time of once in a while, even like once, even if it's once a month, it's like, wow, I appreciate that so much. I know how busy mm -hmm. Faisal is. And out of the blue, he just messaged me it's just before Ramadan. Or maybe it's Eid and you sent me a message like where you said Eid Mubarak, Suleiman. Or, you know, for anybody, like let's just say whoever it is, they really appreciate that, knowing what type of person you are. I, I mean, I still, I'd, I'd say that we can all make improvements, definitely, because I, yeah. I, I know that that's a, that's a characteristic of mine that needs to improve. But doesn't that go back to our point again? It's about like what, exactly what you just said. You said I would normally... N like. I would normally be conscious of being over nice to someone because of the responsibility you need to do, right? Right. Doesn't that go back to the same point about it taking responsibilities? Yeah. You're and right. You're I think right. if it's a matter of you're not being that nice to this person because you're trying to fulfill these responsibilities, you're actually being nice. No, I think I thought what you were saying is that I'm actually I'm slack I'm I'm loving my work too much and not giving the rights to the people. No but, no, but you have to do the work. You said it's the work times, for example. And yeah. someone's told you, oh, can we chill, do this, X, Y, and Z, etc., cetera, et cetera. You, What you're doing is fulfilling the right of the work, which is a good thing. But if it's 
you've been work out all like, like you've been at work all day. You have no work to do, but you just want to make it perfect, etc. Can come on Monday, you know, being a bit selfish, mm. loving it too much, etc., etc. Yeah. So I think it's uh, I think intentions come back to it a lot of the time. Mm. On that topic, I, I do feel like um, I'm quite strict with my. Um, family time because of that reason, right? Because I know that my work majority of the day. I don't know if you feel like this when I know you're no. done, but I feel like because I'm at work the majority of the day. M- one of the complaints probably that my friends have about me the most <laughs> is probably that I don't like link up with them enough. Yeah. But I say to them, this is what my belief is, right? I say to them that, <clears throat> like, if I'm working all day, I have a few hours in the evening with my family, and that's so important to me. Yeah. And I feel like they have rights over me, right? And then if I'm working all week, five days a week, then the two days in the weekend are really important to me that I'm like, for example, if I need to go shopping or whatever for the house. Um, uh, and then that dotted around like any other things, uh, responsibilities that I have like classes or anything, now I'm packed, right? Mm. So I, uh, the complaints, let's say for example, if, if friends have complaints that I don't see them enough, my like response to that is, I feel like with friendships, the beauty of a friendship is that you don't have to see each other all the time. You, you but, but when you do see, see each other, it's lovely. And then that is like my dose wow. for that amount of time. You know and I'm good f- until yeah. I next see you. Like, I don't need to now see you every day. And we yeah. can always communicate. And I love yeah. that. But like, if I see you now and I don't see you till, and I don't see you till next month, um, I just want to make sure I get that friendship. I still have that connection because I enjoy those rare times. Wow. But then it will be too much because I, otherwise I'll miss that family time, right? So I feel, I feel like with the friends thing, even though I'd say if you ask all of my friends if I have the balance right, they'd probably say I don't. Mm. But I, I would probably argue that I'm. That's the one of the things that I favour. I'm, I'm quite happy with the balance that I have there. Yeah. What, what do you think about? Hundred percent. You know what? That's uh, that's actually something that's been on my mind for a couple of months now. You know that just this topic right now when you're saying, I feel yeah. like you're literally speaking to me <laughs> because of the fact you know, like you know, I, I got married in the space of a year, mm. and then like. I got so busy, I had, you know, I had a kid, alhamdulillah. And then my life got so busy in terms of, I had to fit my studies with that. Mm. You know, you know, so I'm st- studying Arabic with Ustad and, and Islamic studies and etc. And then fitting that in with the family time and working a nine to five, I'm not just that boy in Cuba no more. Yeah. You get, I'm not yeah. that guy that you can ring in and be like, yo, I'm in Hayes and I'll be there. Yo, I'm in Hayes. Let's go get something to eat and kick back. Because, you know, I'm, I know quite a few people just in London itself. Yeah. So then a lot of people sometimes, they'll be like, I'm in Hayes. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, come, 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 come to me in the masjid. And I used to be kind of my way to kind of fish people in to the masjid. So now it's like people sometimes when they, when they don't see you for a while, sometimes it's even when you're so busy where you, I'll think about the person but then they f- kind of feel like, you know, that awkward kind of like when they see you, like, yeah, salam alaikum, and da, 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 da. <laughs> you get, and it's like, why are you, why yeah, are you moving like yeah. that? Like, yeah, like, th- so the w- one thing advice I give to people is like, always just act like you m- saw the person yesterday. Yeah, yeah. She's keep that girl, same, yeah. like, keep that same. Especially when you know somebody's busy, it's like, it's don't always have, always have good thoughts, always have good thoughts, because mm-hmm. it's like. Wallah, I'll be honest, every single person that I dearly love, like like Faisal, you, uh, Ustad Abdul Ahad, like if, if I don't see uh, uh, you for, for months and months and months, when I see you, it's like I saw you yesterday. Mm, same, it's yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. wow, like yeah. I'm never going to think, mm. when was the last time he messaged me though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't care about my life. Mm. He, he don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what, something that just came to mind when I, when, when you was mentioning that thing, like um, you got your nine to five, you got your family, you got your yeah. studies. Um, this is something that, that benefit me quite a lot when I when I when I started implementing it, right? <clears throat> so there's this, um, and it would only make come full circle, instead If after I mention this, you can it, it perhaps give a benefit from uh, the Islamic angle in in this in this in this concept, right? Because this is this is like a very dunya version. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but basically, Warren Buffett. You know Warren Buffett. He's the guy who's like invested loads of money and like he's like one of the world's richest men. Basically, he's like got stocks everywhere. And you you, you know Warren Buffett, right? You may have heard of him uh, or not. Okay. Well, anyway, is it the Amazon. No, 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 no. Warren Buffett. He's like this old man. He's like invested in like loads of stocks and stuff. He's like multi billionaire, right? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. He has this rule called the five by twenty rule, right? Or five by twenty five rule. Okay. And what it is is, um. He says, write down a list of 25 in uh, 25 of your the things that are most important to you in your life, right? Um, in order of priority, right? So all 25. And he said, now take the top five and 
until you've perfected those top five, don't look at any more. Don't go past it, right? Mm. And so, so when you explained that to me, you said, for example, your your priorities are your um, studies, like uh, perhaps, perhaps in whatever order, but like studies, family, your nine to five, exactly. and then uh, you said. Um, that was it, right? Your yeah, studies, yeah, literally. your work, and your nine to five, right? Five, yeah. So, like, if out of those three, and family, of course. you probably had yeah studies, nine to five, family. Yeah, that's yeah, what you said, that's right? what you said. Yeah, studies, nine to five, uh, and family. And family, yeah. Right. So let's say, for example, you and and that's taking up all your time. Oh, it's a right? lot of time. So if, for example, we try and even add another priority in there, next in order, I would say would be your fitness exactly. wouldn't it it'll be your body yeah. like if you can fit in like a gym session or some kind of sports activity i'd say support that's mm. number four and then number five would probably be socializing with friends exactly for your mental health exactly. and all that. Yeah. right so you're on you you're mar you're working on mastering the top three yeah. even if you manage to master that you've then got to implement your health and fitness for your body wow. so you can look so <laughs> friends is a long time away right yeah but that i really found that five by 25 rule five by 25 will really has benefited me because it's like um then that may help me prioritize so that helped me think all right fine the things that are priority in my life are my like yourself my work my family my studies my health and fitness yeah and right now with just those four i'm so stacked i can't even imagine adding another one there yeah so islamically of course the price i sell them or you know even our pious predecessors we don't have reports that told us they specifically used to write down they need to do x y z etc but if we look at jumlatan or mujmalan generally if we look at it our deen has this process of priority. If we look at uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he sent to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, who was very young, he sent him to Yemen. And he said to him, go to these people and call them to La ilaha illallah. <coughs> if they do that, if they do that, I said if they do that, so priority, then call them to establish the prayer. If they do that, call them to give the zakah. So the ulama they took from this to say the Muslim's life is based upon around priority. Mm -hmm. He didn't say go to them and tell them, look, you have to become circumcised, for example. You have to start going to hajj every year, etc. Even though at that time it wasn't, of course, uh, a, a, a pillar. But he didn't start with the sub-branches of Islam. But rather the most important. Let's look at the hadith of the Prophet or the hadith of Jibreel. He came, what did he first ask, to ask about he said, "Akhbirni an al-Islam," and then he said, "Islam is la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah to establish the prayer, to give zakat, so on, etc." Then, what did he ask him about? He said, "Tell me about iman." He told him about iman and tuma nabillahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rusuli, etc. Then he asked about, "Okay, now tell me about ihsan." The ulama once again they said, "Look, if he started off with the most important, which is Islam, the five pillars, then he said, okay, let me come down, iman." And even Iman is in the order of importance. Allah and His messengers and the angels, etc. Then he asked about Ihsan. And Ihsan is the highest level that a believer can be upon. And ta'abud Allah ka'anna That you worship Allah as if you can see Him. Mm. He didn't start off with that though, did he? No, 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 no. You can't jump to Ihsan when you don't even have the basics, which is your five pillars. No, 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 just pray. Just pray. You don't need to pray as if you can see Allah. Just pray. If it means praying fast, just pray. Give the zakat, just give what you can. Go hajj, just do it. Forget about making it perfect, forget about it. No, no, no. Then you can focus upon perfecting it. Praying my salah with khushu' as if I can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if I'm, you know, standing in front of him, etc. Don't jump straight to it. So generally, the idea of priority is in our religion, without a doubt, 100%. Well, of course, not specifically to say that the Prophet used to do X, Y, and Z first, etc., okay. etc. Et There's even reports that the Prophet وسلم, you know the the Sunnah Salah for Dhuhr, where you'd pray, of course, four before and then two after. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, this is a Sunnah act, right? Yeah. The Sunnah act. It's a Sunnah. It's not a compulsory Salah. Yeah. There's reports that tell us he used to delay it and pray it at Asr time. Why? So he can deal with the hawajin nas, hawaijin nas, the needs of the people. People will come to him, they need to speak to him, they have problems, etc. So he would deal with the problems of the community because he saw that and gave priority to that more than the sunnah prayer that he had to pray. Because this is compulsory for him. The sunnah salah is not compulsory. Mm -hmm. So the priority is definitely there without a doubt. And it's something which our religion has. 
and we should all implement it definitely without doubt i what personally need to implement it. i'm really bad with that what would you advise someone who, who struggles with um priority with prioritizing that's a really tough one generally what i would advise them is firstly look at this thing that you're doing or this thing that you want to put in front of the other can you like is it going to have a detrimental effect if you don't do it before it mm. so right now if you have to once again i don't know do some shopping for the family in comparison to edit a freshly grounded video which one could like which one wouldn't be as detrimental which one would and of course you guys want to be careful with yeah. what you say <laughs> i'm gonna not, i'm gonna choose to not answer that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so do that and also anyone who gives importance it's just importance man it really is all i that's all it is how much do you value something that's but, it but, 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 some, but okay but some people even before you okay so even a step before that some people and i've been guilty of it in, in the past in my life some people perhaps are on such a downward spiral where just their life's erratic. Like, they haven't even got organisation of their life yet. Like, they need to almost like, just put on pause and go, okay, well, w what am I meant to be doing here? So I would personally say, by the way, I'm not one to speak about it because I'm quite bad when it comes to organised. Actually, I would say I'm slightly organised. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. But divide your life. So this is what I do personally. Divide your life into deen and dunya, firstly. Mm -hmm. What percentages are we talking here? Um, <laughs> no, you I mean, 50-50 is fine. Who knows 50-50 is fine? But just look at it as deen and dunya in terms of... At the end of the day, everything we do on a daily basis is one of those two, right? Yeah. And it's either you're working towards your deen or you're working as in your akhirah or you're working for something that benefits you in this world. Yeah. Divide them into that first. A lot of people don't know why they do certain things. A lot of people don't know why they go to gym. A lot of people don't know, like, what is it part of the dunya? Is it part of the deen side of things? Like, firstly, categorize your life into what is what. Mm. Okay? Secondly, I would then say the whole priority stuff. What things could you possibly deal with, you know, at a slightly later time? Allahu alam. I don't know. Personally, I just look at it as what's the most important things. For me, that was the most important things. Teaching the people is the most important things. You know, anything that's got to do with aiding Islam, anything that's got to do with aiding, you know, if it means the community, but it's to stand up for the role of the messengers because there are no messengers to come after that. So anything, by the way, I'm taking out the compulsory things, all right? So stuff like being good to parents, stuff like um, there's responsibilities that are compulsory. First, I do on that. But then after that, nobody is coming anywhere near this. So I don't know. This is, and the main reason is because I give importance to it. I think it's the most important thing. I think the person, every Muslim, indirectly or directly, should be involved in da'wah, etc. So if there's someone who comes to me, I see this as da'wah, by the way. So if someone comes to me today and says, oh, look, right now, it's whatever time it is, I have to go to Freshly Grounded. I see it as da'wah, Okay. If someone else comes to me and says, look, why don't we go to the gym today? Or why don't you, for example, I don't know, let's just, I have a business idea. Let's come and think about it. I can't do it. Sorry. Because I'm dealing with this. And this is the most important thing to me. Wow. Same as freshly grounded, of course, with you. If it is something which is really important to you, like nothing else can come around that. Mm. Nothing else can like come in it. And at the end of the day, is it in one of the two categories? Deen or dunya? It is. But I think number one, everything else would go into place. Categorize your things into the things that will aid you in your deen mm. or aid you in your dunya. Actually, anything else that won't throw it in the bin. Exactly. And I yeah. say that and I'll say that confidently. If anyone wants to take offense a bit of both as well. It no, no, if anyone both. wants to take offense to it, like of course we're not being offensive, but anything like you wake up and you do any move in your life that hasn't benefited you in the deen or the dunya. Yeah. That's a clear loss, wallahi. Some of our pious priests, they would say, um, I think it was Abdullah Mubarak, I can't remember exactly. He said that on, th on the day of judgment, wallahi, this is so scary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people that are like these, wallahi. Amen. When I think of it, I'm even shy to say it because I am guilty. I don't even want to say it, wallahi. I'll say it after. No, I think there are benefits. No, no, right? no, 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 we want to know. He said the people of Jannah Is it a hadith? Allah I can't remember off the top of my head But he said the people of Jannah The people of Jannah Are going to have one regret Does that even sound logical? Mm. People of Jannah in Jannah So I'm not finished though 
But initially, does that make? Could you wrap that around the head? How can someone yeah. who's in Jannah in have like, any regrets? Yeah, he said. The regret they're going to have is one second of their life that they didn't spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in Jannah. What complaint could you possibly have? What regret could you possibly have? One second. Mm. Once again, it could be anything that aids you in your akhirah. Likewise, anything that aids you in your dunya, which eventually aids you in your akhirah. One second. Our car journey took how long? 20, 20 minutes? Yeah. Uh, 20 minutes is a long time. What could have we possibly done that could aid us in our dunya? I don't know. If you had emails to make, I could have made them for you on the spot. Mm. If you had people to reply to, I could have replied to them for you. If you, that is something. Also, your akhirah. We could have done subhis, of course. We could have read Quran together. We could have reminded each other about Allah. Just something. Mm. So I think it comes back to that. Dunya, deen. What are the things that come under these two? If there's anything that doesn't come under it, doesn't deserve to be anywhere near your life. Yeah. Whatsoever. I want to kind of put you and on the spot. That's the slogan, inshallah, ta'ala, that Ish. we should all have. Inshallah. Yeah. I want to kind of put you on the spot, Ustad. Um, so Ustad went to university, yeah? Okay. He graduated, Allah Barik. Um, what, what did you graduate in? So I studied geology. Alhamdulillah. Do you know what geology is? It's of the course. It's of rocks. The rocks and, yeah. See, everybody says oh. this. Geology comes from the Latin word, I think anyway, mm. geo mm. and logi. Geo means earth, logi means the study of. So it's a study of the earth. Everyone says rocks only, but it's, <laughs> it's basically rocks. <laughs> now, <laughs> I studied criminology, so the, the ogi of criminals. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> the no, study of criminals. We've studied in geology. Yeah, geology. Um, at the same time, I know that you was also teaching classes. So, and you was also doing your own studies. So, at one time, I kind of, kind of deeped it just to put him on the spot. I'm sorry, but I was thinking, how is he doing his dissertation? Which, you know, uh, how many words? It's like probably 20,000 words or something above that. I think you maybe done about roughly yeah, that. It's about 14,000 words. 14,000 words. Teaching Arabic classes also have got, you know... If it means da'wah, teaching, yeah, just khutbahs, that one, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, khutbah, you know, uh, uh, teaching Arabic classes and also teaching Qur'an. All of that, it requires a, a, a very, very strong kind of uh, time management skills that, mm. you know, that you must... Because wow. I'm not going to lie, I've started watching um, Faisal's videos on, on time management and it kind of led me to... Um, uh, what's his name again? I've kind of stopped. Uh, you're talking. I know you're talking. I haven't done him in a while, man. I've been so busy with Freshly Guys. You're what thinking about uh, Frank? Thomas Frank, Fra Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank. Yeah. I started watching some Thomas Frank, and then uh, you led me to that as well. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I started f thinking to myself, you know what? I need to have a morning routine, a proper morning routine, where I got up, I get up and I do this, and I get up and do that. So, what advice would you give to kind of uni students? Because there is a lot of uni students that suffer with like, oh, you know, mm. after I finish uni, I'm going to do this and do that. So what advice could you give to even people that's in universities or maybe going into university that you can maybe tell them to, you know, um, focus on in terms of uh, time management? Have you implemented a, a morning routine, by the way? I have. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I have. Alhamdulillah. So when I wake up for when I wake up for Fajr, I have a coffee first. <laughs> so I keep myself awake okay. because a lot of the times when I wake up for Fajr, sometimes you you, you know you pray Fajr, do your azkar, and then you kind of feel that little tiredness. Mm. You go back to sleep a little bit. You know what I mean? Or you just start your day and just you know just go to work or you know do your stuff. So what I try to do now is you know I wake up, have my coffee to kind of get me in the uh, you know just keep me yeah, awake dude. and stuff and then I'll you know prioritize what I need to actually know I'll, I'll have a, a, a actual uh, 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 you know a schedule that I have to do like for instance I have to come with my Quran okay I'll do that so I'll just focus a lot on that that's my Quran time boom and then I have to go to work you know what I mean so I try to keep that kind of schedule and it's helped me a lot so look at that you even motivated me yes, now I'm saying like just, you, just the morning routine you motivated me because Faisal said something which touched me a lot he said I started having a morning routine and then Saturdays and Sundays, I used it as my chill out kind of times. So, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, I have a nice lie in. And it's true. He said to himself, like, hold on, I could actually be doing so much thing that's productive. I could be doing all the extra stuff. I could be doing everything that I wanted to do in that time that I would have woken up for work. Then I clocked, I said, you know what? You know, I actually said to myself, you know what? From now, I'm not going back to sleep. I'm going to wake up just the way I wake up for work. Yeah. And I actually woke up 
And wallahi, I'm being honest with you, it helped me so much in wow. terms of family stuff. Wow. I got to do all the stuff in the morning. My morning became so long, I, I was yeah. so shocked. The barakah in the morning, like, like Bro, you said, it's, amazing, it, the it, it's the longest thing ever. So waking up for Fajr like six o'clock, yeah? When you're up from six, seven, eight, nine, when you look at it, when it's like 10, you've done so much. You look at 10 o'clock and you're like, it's 10 o'clock. You probably, f I, I rang my friend, maybe, I, like I rang one of my friends, like maybe by about the whole time, and he's like, yeah, assalamu alaikum. And I think, you just woke up. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, get, you know what you think to yourself? Oh, you just woke up. I just done the whole world of things, <laughs> and, and you just woke up. Not like looking down on them, but it just made me think like, look how much, you know, like, you know, you, like, you, can, you can make use of your time. So how, have you got some sort of structure, Ustad? Sorry to long the question. <laughs> so, um, so first of all, I'd like to say that I... I'm not someone that the people should, people should look up to. I'm not someone that, you know, uh, should be uh, someone that the people should try to follow it, the steps in, you know, uh, accomplishing things because I'm not one who's accomplished much. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us lil uh, imaman, a leader for the Muslim, for the believers. Um, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not worthy of it. But just, just to say a few things, First of all, I remember the speech of Imam Shafi'i, mm -hmm. and everything I'm going to say can be summarized in this. And I think it's something that can be implemented in our deen and our dunya. Again, that balance, even with freshly grounded. Okay, he said, "بقدر الكد تكتسب المعالي ومن طلب العلا سهر الليالي." He said, according to how much effort. Blood, sweat, and tears someone puts in, they will reach the same amount. And whomsoever aims to reach high, lofty, lofty, lofty levels, he's going to miss out. Sahar al layali, he's going to stay awake at night. Mm. That doesn't literally mean staying awake at night because it's not really a good trait anyway to have to be up at night. You should be sleeping, right? What it means is you have to be doing something that others are not doing. So most people, they sleep throughout the whole night, right? Yeah. You have to be different. You have to cut out one hour, 30 minutes, two hours, three hours, whatever it is. And then he said, وَمَنْ طَلَبَ الْعُلَى بِغَيْرِ كَدٍ أَضَاءَ الْعُمْرَ فِي طَلَبِ الْمَحَالِ Whomsoever wants to reach these lofty status, this lofty status, in accomplishments, without any hard work, this person is going to waste his life in trying to accomplish the impossible wow. I think everything can be concluded in that Why is that the case? What things do we take? Number one You have to do something that everyone else is not doing mm. So you have to Most students, what do they do? They probably sleep all night Then they mm. come to classes late Then they would stay, you know Just normal routine yeah. I try to change that a little bit I Try to change that a little bit So there'll be sometimes And uh, you know, there's a brother that I studied with Two brothers that I studied with That you know we were together a lot and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. I mean. Umar and Muhammad. These two brothers, sometimes, it was mainly exam season to be honest, but sometimes we would go to class, sorry, no, no, not class, we would go to the university maybe two hours before the lecture, three hours before the lecture sometimes. So we're talking sometimes 5 a.m., <coughs> sometimes 6 a.m. That's the time that most people wouldn't be awake and we would yeah. be there, 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 there. Wow. Likewise, you know, we would stay behind and, you know, uh, sometimes until 1 a.m., sometimes it was 2 a.m., you know. And this is just normal days. It isn't specifically for exams or anything like that. That's point number one. Secondly, is make the most of the resources you have around you. I use the word resources, but very, very, very vaguely. Why? Because I'm talking about human beings as resources. Mm. And I said I use that very vaguely. My mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. Allahumma I mean. She was, or she is someone, shall I say, she's alive. She's someone that, wallahi, anything I personally do, wallahi, it's because of her. And I say that clearly, and I, it's not just to make it look good. No, 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 no. My mother, like, sometimes I would wake up, because I'm leaving sometimes 5 a.m., leaving my house 5 a.m., sometimes earlier to get to the university, right? The way I would wake up is not via my alarm. I would smell rice being cooked at 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m. Wow. 
I would wake up thinking, what on earth is this? I'd go down and my mum's in the kitchen at 3.30, 4 a.m. cooking food, packing up food, etc., etc. She would call me, have you ate your food? And she would just be on my case, just like every mother would do. But it's that, it's 3 a.m., you know, like it's not, it's not a norm. 4 a.m., sometimes 5 a.m., according to whenever I'm leaving. So when I said make the most of your resources, I use that word vaguely, but your mother is a resource, my brother. Your friend is a resource. Your cousin, your siblings, they are resources. So make the most of them. Um, another thing I would say is, I don't know, how did I... Another thing, in fact, is, which is I started implementing towards the end. So the last two years, whilst I was, I was in university, mm-hmm. there's times I would... So most of the time, which is bad, I would rely on myself. Get up, do this, do do et cetera. Cut out from your sleep. I would sometimes sleep three hours, four hours. You know I don't sleep that much anyway. Mm-hmm. But I realized that it's having a tone, me, myself. I'm getting called for a khutbah. I'm getting called to go to this country to do a lecture, for example. Well, it's so funny. <laughs> I was in Finland and I, had, I was to, to, to deliver a lecture basically at a conference. <laughs> I actually shouldn't be saying this. If any of my lecturers are watching this, I'm really sorry. But I had an exam, had an exam on the Monday, and I was in Finland for about four days. Those four days were the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I got off the plane. Wow. And I went to my exam. Okay. So I'm getting called to go give lectures here. I'm getting called for a khutbah for me. So khutbahs are quite often. I've got lectures here in this country as well, going to Manchester, etc. Plus I've got my weekly classes and then I've got dissertation to write. I've got exams coming up, X, Y, and Z. I mainly put all of the hard work to myself. There was a time it really took a toll on me. I took a step back. Well, like, this is my message to anybody who's going through similar. Prophet our uh, Prophet Shuaib. He used to call his people for years and years. Worship Allah alone. Stay away from what you're doing. Turn back to Allah, etc. His nation didn't listen to him. Then what he done was, but he used to rely on himself. He said a very profound statement in the Quran. Allah said, he said, Ayyun Shu'aib said, وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And he after, he started to rely on Allah more. He started to give Himself, maybe 50% of the work, come with the asbab, come with the means, but leave the rest to Allah, make dua to Allah. You know, it's not your efforts. What did Allah say? Because then the people start listening to him. His nation started accepting his message, his, his nation started accepting Islam, etc. Allah said, the tribe said, it's not my efforts, it's not me. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ It's not my hard work that is doing this, that is making these people accept it. It's only because I turn to Allah. And I pass my matter on to Allah. So I remember times, ala kulli hal, wallahi, that little dua you make, that 20 minutes before the, you know, Salatul Fajr, mm-hmm. you get up and pray, that is the extra push. That's where the impossible becomes possible. Wallahi, I experienced it. Wallahi, I experienced it. And I, oh, I, like, I wish I implemented it earlier, but it helps. You'll be at work, don't belittle. You're thinking, no, no, I'll make the dua later on. No, make it whilst you're sitting down editing. You know, don't put the full effort upon yourself. Give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his right in making the impossible work as well. So that is another one. Allah alam. Just be different. Do things that others are not doing. You know, wake up those few hours before, make the most of your resources. People are going home. No, stay behind. You know, I would prepare lectures and that stuff and stay in the university. There's a room, of course. So stay there. You know, prepare the lecture there instead of going home, whatever. So just sacrificing certain things. It was basically what Imam Shafi said. Yeah. can make it in a nutshell. You have to be different. You have to not go with the usual stance of life. Mm-hmm. Tweak it up a bit. If I were to say what's... Um, if I were to say what is your... One of your favorite du'as from the sunnah, uh, what comes to mind? So because I speak a lot, is Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, with Sidli Amri, Wahlul Uqadat and Milisani, Yifkahu Kauli. That's one of my favorite duas simply because of the, you know, what I'm involved in, because I speak a lot, etc. So I would tend to lean towards that a lot, to be honest. But there's many duas. The duas, every dua came for a reason, man. Every single dua came for a reason. Some duas came for balance. Some du'as came for, you know, hardships. Every du'a, you can't underestimate. But personally, that one the most. Because look, Musa alayhi salam, he, I don't want to say was tongue twisted, but he had a problem when it came to speech. 
He never tried to just practice. He never tried to just, you know, no. Rabbi Shrah Ali Sadri. Oh Allah, you know, open my like, you know, open my chest for me, as in make me someone who could speak. Where silly amri and make my matter easy. This, uh, uh, this uh, twisting of my tongue that I've got, or this, you know, difficulty I have in speech, please make it easy for me. He didn't deal with himself. So I would say that. I would definitely say, but that's specifically because I speak a lot. What would you say, Um What do I just comes to mind? Just springs to mind. <coughs> Um, just springs, I would, bro. I'll, I'll, okay, I would springs. say, Allahumma yassir li Quran. Well, oh. oh, That's what I'd say. That's good one. Uh, yeah, because uh, you know, I, as I'm memorizing Quran, sometimes it's hard. Mm. So I always try to say that. I always say, you know, Allahumma yassir li hifdul Quran wal amal bi, and to also uh, uh, act by it, mm. and to also act by it. So yeah. What about you, Faisal? I was just gonna say. What I about think, you? Um, <laughs> I think I think I would I would have said. Um, like uh, we, we we were speaking about this in uh, Itikaf with uh, y- y- Yasir, you know Yasir. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yasir. yeah Amazing. We were speaking. Uh, he, he, we were kind of in a circle a few years back, and uh, we, this is that's why that's why it came to mind. And at that time, and still now, probably I'd say Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kana But um, I think in recent times, um, I wouldn't say like fall more in love with, but one that's been like more. Um, on my mind is you know the dua that encompasses um, asking Allah for uh, I'm trying to think about it in English now the um, uh, being free from the uh, being free from like the the, the ruling of others uh, there's like three or four things mentioned I think that's the last one that's mentioned um, but free from anxieties mm. uh, and feeling like pressure and laziness others, as well laziness. Laziness. Yeah. yeah so there's a, there, the, 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 the the things mentioned in that dua. I like, I remember, I think it might have been uh, Ustad Tim Humble, maybe, who was talking about that dua and mentioning kind of, if you really analyze that dua, it's everything. Yeah. yeah I saw that. <laughs> Can I saw you tell that us more well. about that, Ustad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Because normally, what do, what do people look for? So, firstly, they look for freedom, if you want to call it freedom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, Ya ayyuhan nas wa antumul fuqara, you are poor. Wallahu al ghani al hamid. So being someone who is free from human beings, that's something everyone wants. Secondly, huzun. Uh, if you want to call it sadness, depression, anxiety, etc., which is a natural thing that people come across. Uh, that's more of an inside slash innate, not innate, sorry, that's more of an internal uh, feeling, right? So that's the second one. The third one is more of an outward. So it's not internal, it's external, which is al kusul or kasul. Laziness. Mm. Um, the reason why that's very powerful is someone who's lazy practically can't do anything. Dunya and Deen. Everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally nothing. So you have the internal part of it, you have the external. Um, and wallahi, laziness is something which is dangerous, man. Because mm. mm. that is, as you said, your whole Deen and your Dunya is down the drain, you know? You know, I um, think naturally, like naturally, I'm a lazy person, a very lazy person. Don't want to say. Why would you say you're naturally <laughs> lazy? I'm trying to change it to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would you say you're naturally lazy? No. I think you're very um, no, no, no. Uh, active. Allahu Barik. You're very, mashallah. But th- that's. But or is na- that just like the outside? My, yeah, my natural <laughs> state. I think is I'm very lazy because I think um, uh, uh, like growing up, like I was quite lazy. So mm. if I am productive and stuff, it's because I had to like force it into me or become really. Pa- Do you know what else I think b- um, makes you not lazy is Becoming really passionate about something, like yeah. for example, the, yeah, like, yeah, sort of man, even yourself, like the if you compare yourself to from a few years ago and then you start becoming passionate about the deen, would you ever a few years ago say that you would like even be starting to try and memorize uh, Quran oh, or uh, Arabic no. language? Or, you, no, 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 but, but, yeah. but, but you'd be like, oh, but I haven't got time for it, yeah, and maybe even a bit of laziness would keep it, <laughs> but yeah. You became passionate about it. Exactly. Sorry, was that I wanted to. So no, 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 no this man doesn't speak from his desires. Mm. Everything he says is a revelation. 
Everything he says, everything he walks and he uh, does, sorry. So um, all the du'as of the Prophet mm -hmm. they're very special. And uh, you know, talking about du'as, what's amazing is every Prophet was given a du'a. Mm -hmm. Every Prophet was given a du'a. They used it. Um, of course, Musa alayhi salam, he used it. Uh, Isa alayhi salam, he used it. Uh, Suleiman alayhi salam, he used it. So all of the Prophets, they used it in something specifically. If it means being saved... Uh, from uh, drowning, for example, no. If it means being, if it means to Isa alayhi salam, for example, curing the leper and all that kind of stuff. Alakulli had they all used this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was given the opportunity to use his dua. He said, "I'm going to save it for my nation on the wow. day of judgment." Amazing. And was he someone that needed duas? Did he have a tough life? Of course, he went through everything, and he said, "I'm going to wait." On the day of judgment for my nation. So it's it's important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us the ability to really ponder Amen. upon it and make Amen. us love this man. Uh, and uh, we send salutations upon him just because Maghrib came in recently, that's right? That's <laughs> um, I, I want this uh, podcast to go on for so much longer, but um, with the time and, and uh, we, uh, so those who are listening um, don't know that we are recording this podcast hours before it's about to come out. So it's a Thursday night. Um, Alhamdulillah But before we do I did want to speak about <coughs> Something that <coughs> I'd heard about recently uh, My brother texted me And told me um, But I don't know much Information about it And I was speaking to When Suleiman When you went to um, The other room I was asking Ustad about it as well And um, It was about this shooting That had happened That we'd heard about So so I, had, I don't know much about it And Ustad mentioned That he doesn't really know Anything about it either um, But that you did Suleiman and so basically, what from what I know is that obviously we're, we're, we're all based in West London and Ustad, that's where you teach. I, I know you teach all around the country, but uh, I suppose that you could say that the base is in West yeah. London. And um, so perhaps, so it seems like it's something that's like very close to home. Um, so, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so I'm going to kind of hand it over to you here um, to kind of take over. But I kind of, yeah, well, I wanted to discuss that, man. Mm. Uh, do you have more kind of a take on it than, 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 than what we know? Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I would say first, uh, the brother was, uh, he was very dear to me. He was very, very, very close to me. And um, he was a, he was he was quite younger than me. And, I, and I, I remember him from when he was a kid. You know, he was one of them guys who was uh, just known in the area. He's He was born in Hillingdon and he also died in Hillingdon, subhanAllah. So... Um, he's never ever left this country in his life. He's, he, you know, he he literally, you know, he he was born here and Subhanallah, he passed away here. And one of the last advices that he gave me was um, <sighs> you know. One of the last advices that he gave me, sorry. That's all right. Wallah, it's deep, man. It's, it's, it's just so deep, man, because <sighs> one of the last advices he told me was <sighs> when, I got, when, I was, when I got married and stuff, I was quite busy, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got very busy and stuff like that. So he told me, he was like, you know, I always watch, you know, like, what's going on, man? You, know, you ain't been posting that much on Instagram and, and, and Twitter and, and Snapchat and et cetera. He's like, you need to carry on doing what you're doing, Suleiman. Just because you got married and you're doing your thing, like, carry on speaking to the brothers. Come out. Da -da -da -da. And I remember me being, f me feeling like, like, ah, oh, like, well, he's right, you know, he's right. And then as I'm going to Arabic, etc., stuff like that, like, even Ramadan, he rang me. I remember Ramadan, my wife was heavily pregnant and, she, you know, heavily. And then he rang me and he was like, I need to speak to you. And then. I even said to my wife, I said, look, I know you're heavily pregnant, but I really need to go right now. And I, I would never, ever leave her at that, at, at that time because I'm thinking to myself, anything can happen right now. So it was literally towards the end and I went to go see him. And then he's telling me about, wallahi, he was telling me I'm going through depression. You know, just, you know, just, just, you know, the life on the streets. And, you know, I was always that person who he could go back to and speak to because he knew where I came from. Like, I, I came from Hayes. He's from Hayes as well. He's a younger from Hayes. And he always spoke to me about how he was feeling and what he really wanted to do. And I remember telling him in Ramadan, I said, look, the massages are closed and it's uh, right now it's locked down, but the gates of Jannah is open. 
ask Allah what you want. I remember me telling him, like, ask Allah what you want. Like, turn back to Allah right now, Abdul Shakur. I'm telling him, I remember saying to him, just turn back. But he was just like, you know, it's hard, man. It's hard, live, you know, like, being in this environment. Like, you know, he lived in the middle of Hastown. He lived in Red Brick. And how he died was, it was not even his kind of problems. You know, those guys in the area that was having, prop, like, beef with some other areas and stuff like that. You know, these kids nowadays, like, like you lot are killing each other for, like, no reason. Literally, you're killing each other for no reason. Like, it's like his games. It's like, you know, this guy kills him from that area. He kills him from that area. Allah's going to ask each and every single one of you, even you guys that never done it, but you guys are gassing it up, giving the fuel to the people and saying, yeah, 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 go do it, go do it. All you guys that are even in, involved in terms of like gassing each other up, well, Allah, Allah is going to ask you, like, fear Allah. So with this brother, he was just a guy who was just in the area. He was just there. And then he was just, he was literally just there. The car pulled up. He must have been just there. You know, they, they shot him and he's dead. He never knew that, you know, to, you know, that, you know, that day was his last day. And subhanAllah, man. And it really touched me. And I was thinking about the, one of our last conversations was him saying like, you know, What's going on, man? Like, you've gone so quiet. I look at my timeline, and with the youth, like I, was said, I said to you, like, they just have only rap and girls and all this madness that they're following, these, these blogs. Like, you know, all these, um, I don't know if you've seen, like, all these, like, Mali drill and this drill and, 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 and all these, like, um, um, street blogs. Like, they have all these kind of things on, on, on Instagram and stuff that all of these kids are watching. All of them are watching this thing. And they all want to be a part of it. Ah, oh, Southall's beefing Acton. Acton is beefing Hayes. Hayes is beefing this area. That area is beefing this. Shepherd's Bush is beefing Ladbroke Grove. You know, stuff like that that the kids are into. Like, the really, really, really and truly why they're doing it is it's all because of boredom. Wallah, if you look at it, it's all because of boredom. Like, if they really all came together and everybody just literally just spoke about, like, right now, look, before blood gets spilled, everybody literally spoke about, you know, what could, like, look, what are we beefing over? Like, is it money? Have I done anything to you? You get it? Like, stuff like that. Let's just leave it there. Do you get it? But it's literally, it's just one of them things where we just really got to help our youth. And I, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who yeah. benefit them and, and, you know, who, 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 you know, be that kind of people that they can always come back to and talk to. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like us, even you two as well, you guys have got a role to play. You guys have definitely got a role to play because a lot of people, they feel like they can speak to you guys because you guys are not just that kind of like, you're not just the older guy where, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like everybody, every single person like that, that's even got uh, some sort of, some sort of, I don't know the word to put it, like some sort of like leadership in their lives. Like every single person who's got some sort of leadership or some sort of spotlight, well, I use it to speak to your youth, man. And they're going to, they, literally, just them seeing a video of you and stuff like that, they really, really value your speech a lot. Like, they value it. Just a little advice you give them. So, subhanAllah. <coughs> um, yeah, so it, just advice to the youth as in, like, just, well, you know, you never know where you, just because of your friends, you never know where you're going to be tomorrow. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's um, about can I, that. yeah, so, SubhanAllah, something that comes to mind, which I just wanted to say, firstly, it's a message to the general mass and a message to the Muslims that are involved in these things. If I divide it into three, number one, the general Muslims. I believe, in fact, not just I believe, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that any sin that occurs and re let's really ponder upon this. I want you to because you're physically here with me. And I want us to really think, wow, I never thought of, I thought of it like that. Every single sin that occurs only occurs due to ignorance. Have you ever heard that statement before? It's Faisal. Every single so sin, that. anyone that sins, they, they haven't committed that sin because they have low iman. They haven't committed that sin because they are lazy. They haven't committed it. No, no, no. It all goes back to ignorance, not knowing Allah. Qatada ibn Da'amat al-Sudusi, Ikrima, Mujahid ibn Jabbar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, I believe, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the Mufassireen of the pious predecessors, they commented on a verse. And they said an amazing statement. They said, Ma usiya Allahu, aw ma usiya Allahu illa bi jahlin. Allah is never disobeyed except due to ignorance. 
they commented on the verse, what evidence did they use? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالًا ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا What does that mean? Indeed, accepting repentance is upon Allah. I.e. Allah is going to accept the repentance of who? Those that when they sin out of ignorance, they turn back to Allah. What was the point? Allah said, when they sin out of ignorance, sin is through ignorance. And this is not just one ayah. There's many verses in the Quran. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِ الرَّحْمَةِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْكُمْ سُوءًا ثُمَّ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَنَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ Same verse. Oh, your Lord has written His mercy upon Himself. Those that when they commit sin due to ignorance, they turn back to Him, Allah will forgive them. Again, what was the cause of the sin? Ignorance. What did Yusuf alayhi salam say? قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ وَأَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Oh Allah, these women coming to me and seducing me, what's better for me is to just go into prison. Why? Because if I don't, I'm going to commit this sin and I'm going to become from the ignorant. Hmm. What did he turn the sin back to again? Ignorance. Nuh alayhi salam قَالَ إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِك your son decided to go, Nuh's son, to go and not come into the ship so they can be saved. So he is from those, he's from those who done what? From the ignorant. What's the point I'm trying to get to here? Every sin that is done is due to ignorance. So what's my message? Learn your religion. Learn who Allah is. Learn about Allah. Akhi, someone who knows Allah is not going to kill someone. Someone who really knows Allah. Abi Ishaq al Nabiri he said that knowledge, when someone learns about Allah, it's who al Abdul Muhannadu laysa yanbu tusibu bihi maqatila man darabta or man aratta. What did he say? The knowledge that you learn about Allah is what? It's like a sword. This sword is so sharp. Anyone you hit with it, they're going to be destroyed. What's he talking about? The knowledge is the thing that's going to protect you when someone tells you to come and do a sin. These shayateen that are coming to you. Come, let's do this. Let's do that. You've got your sword ready because it's the knowledge you learned. So my first message is, ala kulli hal, turn back to learning about Allah. Learn your religion. One who knows his religion is not going to be falling into these things. The second point I want to touch upon is to those people that have not been taken. Allah hasn't taken their lives. Allah does not delay a soul from the time that it was appointed to be taken. You could be next. You will be questioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Death doesn't come to someone and ask, do you want to go? La wallahi. And you will be questioned about these lives that you are taking. These people that you are taking, especially Muslims. Allah said, whomsoever takes a life is as if they've taken all of mankind. This Muslim now, does he not have more of a right? So my second point is, ala kulli hal, those people who think, uh, you know, that you're not going to be next or anything. Abu Ishaq al-Biri, he says, وَتَشْهَدُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ دَفْنَ خِلٍ كَأَنَّكَ لَا تُرَادُ بِمَا شَهِدْتَ You are every single day seeing a burial as if you are not the one who is wanted by this thing that you are saying, uh, that, that, this thing that you are being, uh, seeing. What does that mean? You're seeing a grave, someone going into it. Oh, someone died, etc. You're witnessing death, right? You're looking at it as if the death doesn't want you. Death wants every single person. So these stabbings, killings, shootings, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq to be free from it. Ameen. And may Allah guide the people who are indulging in it, taking Ameen. part in it, Ameen. those that are, you know, even, even making a phone call to even have anything whatsoever to do with it. Mm-hmm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify their situation. Mm-hmm. Turn back to Allah. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that these people that are falling into sins, they are the reason why Allah destroys nations. Don't think to yourself, I've taken this guy's life, I've only affected his family. Ach, you're going to affect us. Allah is going to exactly. destroy us. <laughs> Your Lord doesn't destroy a nation whilst they are on good. No. 
the only time Allah is going to destroy a nation is because inside it is zalimun, people that are oppressors. So like your sins, you killing someone, you destroying someone's life, you taking, you're not just affecting the family. You're affecting us, you're affecting the whole community, you're affecting everybody. So ala kulli hal, that's my message to everyone. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give patience to the family as well who experienced that and uh, give us all tawfiq. Jazakallah khair. So, Sulaiman, for sharing that. And uh, I know that was not easy. Um, but I think that the message that you gave is a really impactful one that's really going to benefit both. So, I really appreciate you doing that for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, Ustad, Jazakallah uh, khair for, for, for yeah, Allah Allah Allah. jumping on Fresh to Guarded. Um, please do come back. Inshallah. Be an honor. Um, Next time we can kick Suleiman out. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really kidding. Well, perhaps Suleiman will do the episode or the, the host it by himself. You never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's been amazing. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you and, for um, having us. Yeah, no, no, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. And um, and uh, like I say, uh, you know, when we when we have someone here for the first time, you know, after that the door is open, so you just come in whenever. And and and, and whenever you're in the area, sure. please just um, come by and. If you just fancy getting out of the house, you know, <laughs> and you just want to get some work done, we got we always got a spare desk here uh, and some really good quality Wi-Fi. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get some work done, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, Jazakallah khair for everybody, uh, to everybody for, um, for for watching, for listening, and uh, we will see you again next week, inshallah. I would say, if I can just add, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor Faizu and his family. Amin. Because wallahi I see the work he's doing and the effort he's putting in and he's taken out a job that he could just be doing normally and what he's decided to do is come and do a job that is in the service of the Muslims. Mm. You don't have to be doing this. You don't have to be investing in this. You don't have to be, you know, sitting down interviewing people speaking. But what I really seen from him is, and I don't want to praise you, of course, but you have a bigger aim. You have a bigger goal. And as Muslims, we shouldn't be people that are just aspiring. Ah, oh, I want to go to university, get a job, live my life, worship Allah, and then pass away. Mm. Leave a legacy behind. Mm. Come up with a service for the Muslims, something that Muslims are going to benefit from. You know, as the Prophet Salam, he told us as well that the best of you are those who are the most beneficial to their people, to their wow. community, to their nation. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him, Amen. his family, Amen. his uh, his mother, his father, Amen. his his children, oh, just Allah. every single person connected to him, his friends Amen. and everybody else. And I also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you from those that are sincere Allah and Amen. that only do things for his sake Amen. and Amen. that only and he want the khair for his ummah. Allah and Amen. anything that starts off with a pure intention, it's going to end up clean. It's going to end up being successful. So maybe it's a sign, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us, that you know, uh, anything that starts off good, فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً وَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسَ فَيَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ This verse is amazing. What does it say? Anything that doesn't really have much benefit, Allah gave the parable of, you know, when you, you know like the river, anything that is like paper-like, or like even a packet of crisps, for example, if you put it inside the river, what happens to it? Packet of crisps, for example. Flows, flows, it goes, and it won't be solid, it won't stay in the river. That's the example of things that have no benefit. They'll come, it'll be gone, it'll be forgotten about. Come, might be good for a month or two, and then it'll go. However, Allah said, As for that which is beneficial to the people, it's going to be firm on the ground. If you threw a rock inside the river, is the, is the, is the water going to take, take it or not? Enough. It's going to be firm. So anything that has benefit for the ummah, Allah is going to stand up for it and allow it to reach people that you can never think of. So may Allah bless you, ala kulli hal, and mm-hmm. aid you. And I, you know we are all behind you, so keep up the hard work you're doing. May Allah accept oh, it from I you mean. as well. May Allah on you. Jazakumullah khair.